All right, buddy. So, what's your name and where are you from for the people that might not already know? My name is Burner420. My real name is Jeremy. I'm from Utah. Um, I'm a TikToker slash YouTuber. I do all kinds of different social media platforms. I also do music. I rap. And I just try to, you know, do my thing. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, you were on the show, shoot, a while back. Was this about two, maybe three years ago you were on the show? Yeah, it's been, it's definitely been a while. Yeah. And it was a good episode. I think that thing's generated, what, a couple hundred, hundred thousand views, maybe? So what do you think uh, would be the turning point when it came to uh, social media? What was the video or, 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 or something that started drawing the eyes to you? Well, so what kind of like did it for me on TikTok is one day I just posted a video and I didn't know what to post. And uh, I ended up waking up with 5,000 followers. The next day, it just happened. My, my first video went like kind of semi-viral. And so I was like, man, this is easy. And I didn't know it was as hard as people thought because there's people that grind for like a year, two years to just get the first thousand followers so they can go live. Uh -huh. So I immediately was blessed, just, you know, from there on. And uh, I just started creating content and I didn't know. Like I've been locked up and incarcerated my whole life. So I didn't really know like too much about anything except prison, bro, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just kept posting prison videos, but where my niche kind of gave in was no one was doing that. There wasn't one person on, t on TikTok that was actually talking about prison, posting about prison stories, like trying to preach to people, you know. Oh, so you were, and, uh, you would consider yourself the first on the TikTok yeah, side I of things? I mean, I know there's a lot of creators that's happening since then, but I never really paid attention. Like I said, I wasn't on TikTok until a little later on. Uh, but I wasn't paying attention to who started cracking the code first, you know what I mean? But yeah. but that was you breaking the playing fields, huh? Most definitely. Okay, okay. And uh, 5,000, well, let me ask you this, man. I remember when I first got my couple thousand of subscribers overnight, when the, when what I like to call, like we were just talking about before we start recording, the light switch. How did you feel when you saw them 5,000 subscribers, man, out of nowhere, or followers? Well, I didn't really know what it meant. I didn't know like what to do with my following or where I was going with it. I just knew what worked for me in the beginning, so I just ran with it. Yeah. But once I started gaining, like I I probably had like a hundred thousand followers within the first month of doing TikTok, and then once I started getting recognized, like in stores and like all over my city, is when I was like, man, I can actually do something with this and actually become like a famous person on the internet yeah. through TikTok. Yeah. That was wild when someone recognized you out in public. Yeah, it, it usually happens at Walmart. I don't know why. That's weird. Damn, Walmart. Mine usually happens at 7 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'll, I'll be pumping gas or something. You know what I mean? Getting a pack of cigarettes. But, well, let me ask you this, man. Coming from, I mean, you're a prison YouTuber. You talk about prison content. So do I. What do you think? How do you think people will feel about individuals like us? If we were to get locked back up again, do you think there'd be people in the block with a distaste for us? Absolutely. And the only reason I say that is because it's not like we're actively getting on these channels and like dropping any information that anybody don't already know. But I feel like a lot of people don't know how to make it out the struggle. And so when they actually see somebody that's successful, doing hate. something that they can't, they immediately hate on them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I try telling people that all the time. People ask me that. Hey, death, you can be all good if you go back to prison. I think, personally, I might be all good, but there's going to be a chance where someone, you know, there's always going to be someone that ain't going to like what we do on social media, regardless if you're a part of an organization or not. You know what I mean? At least you recognize that. You know, some people don't, but... All right. Well, it's like once once you become successful and once you uh, start running a business and doing everything like that, you learn to actually... Just mind your own and just do what you're focused on, you know? So it's not like we're, I'm out here breaking laws and doing crazy shit anymore. I'm trying to run a business and be successful. Okay, well, there you go. That leads me to another question, man. You came into situations, I'm sure, where you feel like you might have been, dis you know, social media. People feel disrespected all the time or they might have been cheated or copied or talked about. What do you do with these type of situations, man? When was the time where you realized, hey, have you even realized... I can't be handling it like I would in prison or the street life. Well, for instance, there was this one creator, you know, because I'm going to say his name because I don't want to give him clout he don't deserve. Yeah. But uh, 
I was just scrolling on TikTok one day and he used to kick it in my uh, TikTok lives. And uh, I seen the story and I was like, this is my story. Like this was actually my story. Like the way I, I, I constructed my story, like the, the sub captions I use, like the exact story of something that happened to me in Utah, like the exact story. And so I reached out to him. I was like, man, I was like, why are you copying exactly what I'm doing and telling my stories? And I was like, you've been to prison, right? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, you got your own thing to preach. Like you got your own like avenue to take. So I was like, why are you like copying me? He's like, well, it's working out for you. And I want to do the same thing. And so I hit him up and just told him like, look, man, if you got a story, like tell your story. Cause there is people that want to hear it. And like the old me would have been like, man, like you bite off my this and that, and, like get all like mad and crazy. But now I just kind of, I, I try to preach to people. I try to be like, almost like the big homie, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to like, I, cause I want to see other uh, felons succeed. You know, I, I'm not greedy, it ain't just me. So I, I hit him up, he started doing his thing, he gained a good following. And uh, one day I was doing these like TikTok battles where like pretty much his, my team versus his team. And like, we see who sends the most gifts. And uh, he like sent a bunch and then we smoked them. And we did that like three times in a row and he got all mad at me and then we fell out. Oh, so I was just like, man. I feel like I just, I feel like I just helped you and gave you like, had like hours and hours and hours on the phone trying to explain shit to you for nothing, you know? So yeah. now I kind of refrain from helping people that much unless I, I know they actually deserve it because I feel like the more I help people, the more that they just think that like they just take advantage of it, you know? Yeah. See, I look at it like this. I'll help as much as I can. If they do me dirty, then my higher power would take care of it. Anyways, let's get into the prison side of things, man. Let's get into the prison side. They hate to jump back into the beginning, but some people might not have heard your story. I'm going to keep your first part linked in the comment section if y'all want to go check it out. But give people a little breakdown, man. You know, what the hell led you down the dark path a little bit? All right. Well, I first got incarcerated when I was 13. Uh, me and my friend were just doing dumb shit. We were kids. Uh, I got sent to uh, secure care for uh, some burglaries, some uh, escape charges, shit like that. I've always ran, you know, I never wanted to like actually, they'd send me to group homes, I'd just leave. Um, finally, I went to secure care where uh, for a possession of a stolen firearm by a restricted person uh, and, and a couple house burglaries. I ended up doing four and a half years there. Uh, I got out when I was 18. I went immediately back. They tried to keep me until I was 21. And uh, I told them, I pretty much told them, like, you guys are going to send me to jail or you're going to have some problems, you know? And so they ended up sending me to the adult side of it. I went to jail. I did four months. I got out. I was still 18 at the time. Uh, didn't learn from any of it. I'm still a knucklehead. Kept getting in trouble. Uh, I, I broke into a smoke shop and uh, sold a bunch of stuff. And... Uh, yeah, then I ended up going back to jail where I got sent to a dog pound. Like, it's like a, a community service program. And they had me euthanizing animals. Like, they, they that's what they wanted me to do is help them, like, hold down animals while they euthanize Oh, man, like that's that. treacherous. It's crazy. And then I'd have to throw them in, like, a fire. And I don't know if you guys have ever, like, put down your dog or, like, done anything like that. But, like, you can literally see the light going out the eyes, you know what I mean? And so I told them, like, I don't feel morally right with this because there was one time... Oh, there, was this, like, pug. there was this pug and they euthanized it and they put it in a freezer and uh the next day i came back and after you put it in the freezer after it like passes away you put it in the, like the incinerator and i went back the next day and it was alive in the freezer so like it was literally it literally suffered the whole night in a freezer after they already like like put the euthanized like medication in it you know God. and uh, after that i reached out to him i said man i don't i don't feel good about this like, I, I don't feel, like, morally right. And they told me either you can go back to jail and do the full six months, right, or or you can do 90 days here at this community service program. And I was like, or, you know. So I ended up uh, stealing these uh, fence cutters, and uh, I cut this barbed wire fence, and me and my friend escaped, and we ended up on Utah's Most Wanted. That's wild and as hell. Hold on. So you escaped from what place? It's a, it was like a it was like a dog pound, but the way that they had it set up was for strictly for community service. So the whole area was fenced in, like barbed wire. But y'all stayed the night there. 
No, I, I escaped there. Oh, so while you were on like a little duty or doing your little thing, y'all just broke yeah. out. Okay, okay. Uh, that's crazy as hell, man. Well, let me back it up a bit, man. Let me back it up. Group homes. How'd you break out of group homes? What do you do? Like, how old were you when you were in group home? Mm, like 14 or 15. Okay, 14, 15, man. We all been there, right? So... You leave a group home. I mean, where do you go at 14, 15, man? You know, I mean. Well, for instance, I ran from a couple of them. Like, the first time I ever did it, I was in a place called Brigham City, Utah. It's like 30, probably 30, 40 miles from the city that I'm actually from. And uh, we pulled, like, a whole great escape on the ass. Like, uh, we stole some keys, and uh, we hid, like, all of our clothes, and we stuffed our beds and stuff so it looked like we were still there. <laughs> And there was this old staff, and he used to fall asleep at night. He was like 70 years old. Uh -huh. And as soon as he fell asleep, I went, uh, I went and opened the door, and we bounced. We opened a loading dock door, and we dipped. And uh, we ended up walking from Brigham to another town that's like in between Ogden and Brigham. And uh, I was like, dude, we need to steal a bike, bro, because like, I ain't trying to walk anymore. Like, that's a long walk. And uh, I seen this bike. And I grab it and I start running with it. And I was like, dude, why does this feel so long? And I look back and it was a two seater bike. Like, oh, like, the banana know, jank. Was, yeah. And then so me and my friend <laughs> hopped on it and we just started pedaling. Oh, like, no, I'm the like, banana jank, bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Bad times, but good times. You know what I mean? And then, so we rode it all the way back <laughs> to Ogden. And then uh, from Ogden, I went to Salt Lake, which is like another 30 miles away. I caught the bus. And uh, me and him got on a, a Greyhound, and we ended up going to Edmondson, Wyoming, and lived. I was up there for like three weeks. But like everybody's cowboys up there, and for some reason, I was like, if I put on all dickies and dye my hair blonde, no one will know who I am. And I, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. I ended up getting caught up there. I mean, so you were always with someone, when you're own boys or something, when you're doing this type of stuff? Yeah, I just felt like I. I've always had that, like, one homie that had my back, you know? Yeah. I mean, y'all never were worried about what you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, stuff like that? Yeah, we figure it. we'll figure it out when the problem is presented, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think is the culprit or the main reason? I don't even know if you've ever thought about it. Uh, for you to make the wrong choices, why do you think you lean towards that direction more than the good route, I guess you could say? I think I'm just impatient. I want everything now. And instead of actually putting in the work to get it, I used to just, oh, if I run, instead of actually doing what I need to do, like I can be out right now instead of like in a year, you know? That's but like little did I know, like all it, all it does honestly is just makes everything worse. Bro, that was a good answer. Patient and impatient. Damn good answer. I think that's what the problem is with the majority of us. Let's jump in. Well, how much time did you get sentenced to on the beginning? Uh, or when you started your prison ride, how much time were you sentenced uh, to? So I originally caught 18-month termination. And I was, I was very fortunate. I was blessed. Okay. But when I went to prison, I'm white. So I got hit up by, like, staff members. Or not staff members, but uh, other inmates. And uh, they were, like, pretty much... You know, be a white supremacist or like get the f out of the section. Is this reception or the, or the main main prisons? So we don't really have reception like how like California or other prisons was. Mm -hmm. They just throw us in like a R and O, you know. And as soon as you're an R and O, you do a couple months there, and then they send you to the main yard. Um, as soon as you hit like they hit you up like, what's up, man? Where are you from? Like, you know. And so R and O at first, no, not really. Uh, they were kind of just like, you know, you're going to have to deal with politics when you hit the section. So I hit the section. I walked in. They approached me. They're like, what's up, Wood? And I was like, don't call me that. Like, I'm not the Wood. Like, I grew up with a lot of Hispanics. Like, I'm not racist like that. I'm just trying to do my own thing and stay out of here, you know? And uh, they didn't like that answer. You knew about so, the, the term Wood, though, before they even asked you? Yes, because, well, I grew up, like, in, in, in a highly, like, criminal city. Like, so I knew, like, terms. I knew... Like everything, like I, I'm not, I wasn't new to it, you know. Plus, I was incarcerated for four and a half years prior to this. Yeah, like when I first started doing videos on YouTube, I didn't know anything about the, those type of lingo, right? Because we don't see that type of stuff over here in the East Coast. So, when I remember someone 
said uh it was woody the woodpecker's damn face on the profile now i'll never forget and he said what's up woodpecker and and, and i hearted it not even know what the hell it meant right i thought it was just like a friendly term or something right but <laughs> yeah well I, I had to fight a lot of the time because of it you know they didn't like the fact that like i didn't want to conform to their uh, agenda well tell me this tell me your first experience where you told the guys look I, i'm not really running with with the white dudes and with y'all man what the hell popped off in that time well i had to fight like almost every morning for like 10 days like a little over 10 days it was all because they believe in the whole 14 word thing so i fought a lot and after like the sixth day my knuckles were broke and what do you mean they you fought every morning you just expected it or were you just well they surprised? told me they're like we're gonna send we're gonna send somebody at your head but I, i'm a bigger dude you know i i've been 6 2 200 pounds since i was 15. <sighs> So I was like, all right, I can handle myself, and I'm not new to fighting, you know. Yeah, that, the you're a you're pretty big dude, I, bro. I, I, I don't think I'm Muhammad Ali or anything, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I definitely know how to handle myself. So they were sending their little 18-year-old, like, probates at me and stuff, and, like, you know, they're just not – it wasn't working for them. Okay. And but it's not, about, it's not about trying to get me beat up. It's about trying to test me to see, like, you know. And once they realized that I'm just not some soft dude, they still had respect for me after that, you know. Yeah, and I'm guessing, and was that, did you have to kind of go through that type of situation again, maybe at new establishments? Uh, no, so after that happened, I got sent to Max because I, I got into a fight on the yard, like the actual yard. Yeah. And uh, they, they sent me to Max, and that's when they put me with, uh, he was like a leader of an organization I ended up becoming part of. And that's, you know, that's when I joined a gang. Yeah. Is it hard for people in Utah? to survive uh that ain't a part of organizations not really it just depends how you present yourself like if you go in there with that swagger that like like that you're not soft and something like that there's always going to be somebody that tests you but if you're just some random white dude that goes in there and you're like in there for drugs and like you're just normal and like you don't think you're hard or then you can just fly under the radar and do your own thing our yards are different like for instance california if you're white you gotta run to race right yeah uh, the the crip population in Utah is half white. Oh, okay. Okay. But the bloods don't the bloods don't allow that though. You have to be like African American to be a blood. Yeah. Yeah. I've so it's like every every car runs their shit separate. It's not like there's no conformity. It's just like it's like there's you you just do what you want. Well, let me ask you this, man. Have you ever seen? Because I have, and it's pretty much the same. Like I've said as well. Yeah. You, know, you don't see too many white bloods, and the ones that do even though they might be accepted by this person in this block he might get stomped out the next day by the same organization in the next block they don't like him you know what i mean have you ever seen times like that where a guy's claimed it he don't give up and just keeps on claiming it? no not really because for for the most part like people don't fight they just stab you yeah and once you get stabbed the cops put like a uh like an administrative PC on you, and they don't allow you on the yard. Yeah, I watched actually a little documentary on the Utah system, man, and you get in trouble, man. They got a place for you, that's for sure. They got a side pocket, especially for organizations, man. I See, I didn't know anything about you. Back in the day, I thought Utah might have been like farmland, maybe some mountains or something, but, man, it's got some activity, you know what I mean? I feel like people just associate Utah with Mormons, bro. Well, yeah, yeah, that too. I was kind of getting that vibe as well when i thought about utah idaho i think about potatoes you know what i mean yeah, no, I <laughs> that's just how i guess the tv raised me <laughs> <laughs> but all right so let's say someone comes in for the first time do you think people need a weapon to survive utah um i i would say because the organization i used to be from uh there's a there's a no hands policy is what they call it so it means you you have to stab no matter the situation no matter the situation and if you don't if you don't use a weapon you're considered a coward and like a lot of people would think like oh like if you use a weapon you are a coward that's what a lot of people on the streets would assume but in prisons it's the opposite because it's like if you get me to the point where like we're gonna like go at it like i might as well try to kill you you don't know if they're gonna try to kill you you know what I mean? So, exactly. uh, man, I watched a crazy video the other day. Homeboy got buck 50. He didn't even see it coming, man. And then they ran into the cell all shanked up, hitting him up, you know? 
there ain't nothing you can do <laughs> in situations like that, man. When they come in five deep, all guy shanks, you literally become a pin cushion and you're screaming like a little girl calling from your mom. Most of the situations I've seen. And you can be the toughest person in the toughest. Prison, and you can have five people that can't fight and shanks and you're done. Yep. That's a scary, scary situation to go through. Speaking of shanks, have you ever had a situation like that? Someone pull out a shank on you or something? So one time there was this dude and uh, he tried to pull out like a like a razor, like a cutter on me. But uh, he wasn't very tough, so I took it from him and I just ended up whooping his ass. Like I did, like I didn't like really like use it on him, but I ended up just whooping his ass. But uh, I, I caught a stabbing in in prison. Was there a lot of damage or what? Was a person close to death? Yeah. So he actually uh, he flatlined three different times. Damn! What the hell did you stab him with? Well, there was three of us stabbing him. Oh man. Bro, like so it wasn't like an actual like bone crusher but we had uh they're called breakaway blades they're like these big ass uh like box knife blades and you can like break them into sections and so uh but we had them like in handles and shit and we just we sliced the shit out of them mm. and like do i feel bad i do to a point but at the same time like there was a no coexistence law which means like two organizations like they can't live with each other and if they find out you're living with somebody from the opposite organization, it's your ass. And so he came into the wrong section, started throwing his hood up, which put me in a situation. And it's just, it is what it is. If I would have went to their section doing the same, they would have got me. So it's like... Even if you bad? didn't know about it? Even if I didn't know about it. See, that that's the type of shit that, you know, it's uncalled for, if you are to ask me, you know what I mean? But as prison, you know? I Honestly, man, I feel like a lot of these situations... It ain't even about respect. I feel like it's because motherfuckers bored. You know what I mean? I swear it is. Man, I've seen so much drama started that I swear it's because they're bored. You know what I mean? Yeah. They ain't got nothing else to do, but hey, let's go take these fools out. I know we can take them. It's gonna be it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be a war story, something like that, you know, added to the mix. You make any friends, any close friends in prison? Mm, I actually made some close people I'm still in contact with. But it's usually the people you want to think that you'd stay in contact with. It's like a lot of my friends I stayed in contact with are like people that I knew and like I associated with, but like I, I wasn't close to in prison. And then I, I see them out here and they're like, what's up, bro? And they give me props. Like I see you doing good and stuff. And we end up staying in contact and talking. And they're like, they're on the right path. They're not trying to do some gangster shit. Like they're trying to like raise their family. And we go out to eat and we end up staying in contact like that. That's but what's up. like a lot of my old like friends and shit, I try not to associate with because like a lot of people are just, they're either selfish or they're, they're hateful because they're not doing as good as you or they just haven't gave up that life. And you can't you can't half step that life. It's either you're, you're done with it or you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So is there anything out here that you do to stay away from that path? Anything particular? Do you stay home more than usual? Yeah. Do, you, do you not go to clubs, bars? What, what do you do? exactly what you just said i don't I, I don't drink i don't really do drugs i quit smoking weed and it's not because like I'm, I'm not like a weed hater or anything i love weed my name is burner 420 but like i just feel like i'm dealing with everything that i haven't dealt with like all my emotions and like all my problems were suppressed because i couldn't show the weakness you know and now that i'm older i feel like anxiety's kicking in like stuff like that you know and i, I just have to be careful with what i do i don't like going to clubs I don't drink. I just think it's trouble. Like I have it. I can't think of one time I'm like, "Hey, let's go to a bar," and something didn't happen. Yeah. So I just kind of just focus on my social media. I stay in my house, you know, and I just try to raise my daughter and live right, you know. That's what's up, man. Well, tell me before we wrap it up. Where can the people find you, man? What What do you got looking forward, you know, in your life? Any kind of content and stuff going on? Um, I'm just focusing on YouTube, you know, like, like I was telling you, I've pulled like 20,000 subscribers in the last probably 14 days, something like that. Um, I'm gonna be focusing on that. I also do music, you know, Burner420 on Spotify, Burner420 on, uh, TikTok. I got almost a million followers there, uh, official Burner420 on Instagram, but I got a link tree I can send you if you want to link in the description yep. so they can just, you know. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep everything linked in the comment section description video for y'all to check out his stuff. Until next time, I appreciate you coming on to the channel. And, uh, you know, anytime you need anything, hit me up.